but most often we ourselves are at fault. Our skin is a microbe's paradise. Warm, humid, with thousands of hiding places, we always have bacteria living on us. The electron microscope reveals an incredible landscape of plains, crags and canyons. So it's not surprising that if our hands touch anything with bacteria on it, they will lodge in the cracks and fissures and be carried to anything else we touch. All cuts and grazes, even if they've almost healed, will be a source of food poisoning bacteria. So they should be disinfected and covered. Before anyone knew about bacteria, they found that meat and fish would last if salted. Vinegar also kept food wholesome. And anything cooked in plenty of sugar, like jam, could be stored for a long time without making you ill. There was nothing wrong with well-dried fish or meat either, if only you could chew it. Without knowing why, people preserve food by exploiting the important weaknesses of bacteria. There are only a limited set of conditions under which they do well. If the environment is too sugary, salty, acid, or dry, they cannot survive. But nowadays, we usually control them with temperature. Keep food below 10 degrees centigrade, and they cannot breed. Above 63 degrees centigrade, and they die. This is why catering regulations set these limits. In the laboratory, scientists try and create ideal conditions for bacteria. They're cultured in these plastic containers on a kind of meat extract. They flourish on these plates. In any kitchen, domestic or commercial, all kinds of foods are prepared, many of which will be just as good for growing bacteria. Some will already be contaminated. A scientist infects his agar plate deliberately. He dips a wire loop into a sample and streaks it across the surface. A flame is used to keep out unwanted bacteria. Raw poultry will almost certainly be a carrier. This means that anything touching it, the knife, board, apron or hands, will also be contaminated. If the same hands, unwashed, are allowed to touch any other food, they will pass on these bacteria. This bowl of beef stock is not so very different from the culture medium the scientists used in the laboratory. Now comes the important part. The scientists' plates are put in an incubator. The temperature is quite warm. About man's normal body temperature is ideal. But a kitchen is often pretty warm too. And if our stock hasn't been kept in a fridge, these bacteria will also do very well. By the next day, the scientist has grown millions of them. And so have we. Enormously magnified, we can see the growth. It usually won't be visible at all, but each tiny dot is a colony of millions. What happens now depends on whether the soup was reheated sufficiently to kill the bacteria. Good temperature control, right up to serving, is essential to make sure that your food is safe. There are several food poisoning bacteria, but Salmonella, Clostridium and Staphylococcus are the most commonly encountered. If we know how to protect ourselves from these, we will be safe from most of the others. The story of Salmonella may even start at the farmyard. These animals look healthy enough, and so they are. But if we have a constant supply of bacteria in our intestines, so do they. Salmonella may even arrive at the farm in a bag of meal. But it's at the slaughterhouse that the trouble really begins. When the animals are killed, any Salmonella present in the excreta and intestines will infect the carcass. They will still be there when the meat leaves for the butcher's shop. This doesn't matter if the meat is kept correctly, but it means that even with the cleanest of butchers, one has to assume that all meat, frozen or fresh, 
carries food poisoning bacteria. So you can see the quality is no safeguard. Even if the meat looks and smells good, they're still likely to be there. The butcher may do his best to keep his wares fresh and presentable, but whether you buy meat for your family or restaurant, it is now up to you to make sure that the bacteria are not given a chance to breed. As soon as it arrives in the kitchen, meat and poultry should go into the fridge, freezer or cold store. A good precaution is to store cooked food above rather than below raw meat, where it cannot be dripped on. The fridge is also the best place to defreeze food. It takes longer, but while the meat gets warm enough to defrost, it never gets warm enough to let bacteria grow. A large bird like a turkey really does need proper defreezing. In cooking, the heat takes a long time to penetrate the meat, even in a fresh bird. If the centre is still frozen, the heat will be wasted in melting the iced up portion and it will never become hot enough to kill the bacteria. It is surprising how many people suffer each year for this reason. We can also be a source of salmonella, so hand washing after using the lavatory is an obvious precaution. Clostridium can survive for long periods in the water and soil and can easily be picked up by farm animals. It is probably the second most important food poisoning agent and creates special problems of its own. Under certain conditions, it will form spores. These are little bodies that develop inside the cell. A protective coat forms around these bodies which makes them incredibly hard to kill. While heat will destroy the bacteria, some of the spores will survive even thorough cooking. For this reason, it's just as important to store food properly after cooking as it is before. Clostridium will get onto meat in the same way as salmonella, but favours food like mince, rolled joints and stews. Given the chance, the spores will germinate. If the food is to be stored after cooking, cool it quickly, within an hour or two, and then put it into a fridge.